So as you can see, I actually did a pretty good job bringing the radiator support back out with the sledgehammer. It was curled up underneath there pretty bad. It was messed up. That whole accident really raised that side of the fender area underneath. It um, messed up the radiator support. There's so much that would have to be done to straighten that out. So um, I was trying to get it just back uh, pulled out a little bit so I could get the hood to sit flat on top of it. It was really a mess. And so I was looking around and I saw that in Las Vegas there are two uh, pick aparts that I usually go to. One in uh, Las Vegas and one in Henderson which is right outside of Las Vegas. It's very close. And the Henderson pick apart which unfortunately is the one that's farther away from me had this zinc yellow 2002 Mustang V6. And I saw this car and I thought, oh man, I really want to go get everything off of that car. If I could get the hood, the bumper, the fenders, the trunk, the A-pillars, all that stuff off that car, then I could have my Zinc Yellow GT looking like a Mustang again once I get it all straightened out and put together. And not only that, if I could get these Zinc Yellow parts, which are very important to me, then I could save the cost of having to repaint the car you know if I got any bumper or fender or whatever off any other color car it would look terrible until the car got a full repaint because eventually this car probably needs a complete repaint anyway but if I could get these yellow parts that would save me from having to paint and the car would look really good so that was my goal and I had my eye out for quite a few zinc yellow cars and there were a couple other V6 cars that were around um, for sale that were really beat up and you know I thought about buying those complete cars but I have a problem with taking a car that's already running and driving and cutting it up so I wouldn't have done that so I know sometimes people will get cars out of wrecking yards but everything I've ever done with these pick aparts they are cars that are there for good you will not get the full car out of there so I don't feel bad about disassembling and taking parts off of cars that are in the pick apart yards because they will not let you take the whole car so I didn't feel bad about going down there and getting that but it was several days before I could get down there and I was I was losing sleep over it I was laying down thinking oh man I hope that those parts are still there and I thought you know a lot of people go to a wrecking yard they probably don't want bright yellow body parts for their car so I might be okay there, but I just worried. I was like, man, what if I get down there and it's missing one of the fenders or the hood or the trunk or whatever? And I thought most people don't go down there for the trunk. You know, you see those usually still on the cars when you're in the wrecking yard. But, you know, this car has been there for about a month. So I thought, oh, man, I don't even know what's left of it there. And you can't really call and ask them because they're not going to go out there and look it over or you know, they just say, come check it out. But for me, it's like two hours down there and two hours back. So it's a four-hour drive round trip just on the chance that the parts are there. So I was I was worried about it. And I was losing sleep. And I was thinking, oh, I should probably go get that because not too many of these pop up for sale like this and the pick aparts, you know. I've seen a couple zinc yellows, but they were pretty messed up. And so I thought, well... I should make the decision if I'm going to go or not. And it was a hard decision to make because, you know, it was late on Friday night. It was my wife's birthday, so I didn't want to go down there on Friday and skip out on her birthday. So that means Saturday was the soonest I could get down there. And so Friday night, I was watching a movie with my wife. It was really late, and I just thought, okay, am I going to do it or not? And I thought, well, I guess I'll go ahead and go down there. And there was another car I was interested in looking at while I was down there. And it was this 2004 Azure Blue Mustang Mach 1. I couldn't believe there was an actual Mach 1 in the wrecking yard. I've never seen one in any of the pick parts around here before. And this Mach 1 looked like the whole front end had been replaced. So that's another reason I was interested in looking at this car because I wanted to see how they fixed it. This Mach 1 obviously had the whole front end replaced on it, which is what I'm looking to do with mine, because mine was so messed up that I thought I could go look at how they did it, at least get some ideas. And looking at this car in this picture, this is obviously when the car got there, so this was about as complete as it was when it arrived to the wrecking yard. But you can see it still had the side scoops, the C-pillars, the side glass, all those are very 
uh, nice parts, especially the C-pillars and glass, those are Mach 1 specific. And so I thought, man, I should get uh, some of those parts off there if they're still on there. So I made the decision to go ahead and go down the next morning. This was 1 o'clock in the morning that I set my alarm for 6.30 a.m. And Vegas is an hour behind my time. So um, I woke up actually at 5.30 feeling fully refreshed and ready to go and excited. And so I was even earlier than I anticipated. So I went out to the Tahoe, cleaned it out, took the seats out, got everything ready, test fitted, putting the other Mustang hood in the back of the Tahoe and it did fit so I wasn't going to have to strap it to the roof like I thought I was going to. I got down there to Vegas early, got into Henderson, got to the pickup part and the workers were all lined up there getting ready and <laughs> I was like 10 minutes early and they wouldn't let me in early at all. Like I was hoping they'd just let me go in because what's it going to hurt them if I just walk in and start you know looking around and seeing if any of the stuff's even there already but they just like stared at me while I stood outside the gate but whatever I finally got in there and as I approached I saw the yellow hood open through the clearing and there was the car now it wasn't as nice as I thought it was gonna be I have to remember these cars are 20 years old but I was excited to see that the trunk was still there the hood was still there the fenders were still there what really bothered me was the front bumper was gone but it was there. Somebody had ripped it off and broken the tabs and then they threw it in the back of a pickup truck that was a couple rows behind. I saw it, you know, as I was working on the car, I could look back and see some zinc yellow and I walked back and I found the bumper. And I, was, I was like, man, why did they do that? These people trashed this bumper, they ripped it off and broke it and then they threw it, they didn't even buy it, you know, so it's just really too bad because I could have used that. But Anyway, I was still happy to see the fenders, the hood, the trunk lid especially, you know, because those parts are white right now on the car that I've borrowed from my brother, and I'm very grateful that he's let me borrow those parts for the time being, but I really wanted this, and so I first started working on this, and it was hard to get it all off and put it all in one shopping cart and balance it all, and, you know, the fenders and hood were kind of scratched up, and I think the car's actually been repainted. I could see some overspray, but it was zinc yellow, so it was still okay. I just decided I might as well go ahead and buy it. So I got all those parts off that car, and then I went over to check out the Blue Mach 1, and this car, um, unfortunately, was pretty banged up, too. The door is bent there on the front of it. The mirror's broken off. The side scoops were missing. C-pillars were gone, but the glass was still there, and that's very valuable glass. The rear deck lid looked pretty good. The back bumper was okay, but it did have a big scrape and uh, crunch on it right there on the wheel well area. So the back bumper was kind of trashed. Interior looked all right. The airbags were still in it, although the wrecking yard doesn't let you take the airbags. Um, but I was pretty sad to see it like this. You know, real Mach 1. And, you know, every part on it was kind of messed up. I wanted to get this side skirts. I wanted to get all the blue, azure blue stuff on it. But you could see it was actually self-tapped in there. Uh, it had a couple spot welds, but it was mostly self-tapped together. So I thought, wow, I might be able to remove this. Because if I could get this off this car, then it would totally make the trip worth it. Because I could have the whole front end of a Mustang, and then I could just replicate how they did this. And obviously I would add more bracing but I did get the uh, rear quarter windows out and the only reason they were still there is because the people who tried to get them out couldn't get them out because uh, you have to remove the seat belt and it had a star bit and luckily I brought all my hexes and star kit so I was able to remove the seat belts and get those quarter glass windows out without breaking them so I was really happy about that that was really really good so um, I went ahead and started taking these self-tappers out to see if I could get these out and see if the front end would come loose. And I actually did pretty well. The only problem was it did have those spot welds that were still there. And so once I got everything loose, it was a huge struggle to get the front end off of the car from those welds. So this is what the car looks like now. And it's really a shame because it was still a pretty good looking Mach 1. Like I said, the wrecking yard's not going to let you keep it. It was an automatic car, 
and I did have a friend run the information for me and he offered to and said that it's actually a interior upgrade package car and it was an automatic 04 so pretty rare car and it's really sad to see it like this and obviously it had been wrecked before somebody had put it back together but it still didn't survive later and I don't know why it didn't look like it was wrecked uh, but the drivetrain's gone, the axle's gone, a lot of things were gone they had broken the A-pillars trying to get them off because there's screws underneath which luckily I figured out when I took the yellow ones off the other car but uh, they had broken a lot of things off this car. The side scoops were missing, the fuel door was missing, um, a lot of azure blue pieces were missing, the door handle was missing and I found all those pieces broken inside the car. So they tried to rip them off, they broke them and they threw them inside the car so that's really too bad. And I really wanted to get a lot of stuff off this car, a lot of azure blue little pieces, but um, I just didn't have time. When I was getting that front end off the car, it took forever. I unbolted all those little self-tapper screws, and then those pinch welds were so difficult to get off. I had to pry really hard. I used a screwdriver and my socket to beat on it like a hammer. I took these videos as a reference. You can see how they... Uh, fasten this in here and I was so happy that most of it wasn't welded in because I thought I can do that later um, but man it was really hard to get those off so I did find a um, breaker bar like a tire iron that had the wedge shape and I was able to stick it in the bottom of the frame rail where those little spot welds were and pry the Mach 1's body away there you can see and that took me like an hour and a half of beating and pounding and prying. It was really hot. Luckily, I brought a whole gallon of water with me and I drank almost the entire thing. There was a nice guy there who I asked to help stand on the front and try to break it loose. And he helped me find a tire iron. I checked every trunk and every Mustang and I couldn't find a tire iron to use as a crowbar. Uh, but he found one in a Crown Vic. He found two of them. And he had a little hammer that he let me borrow. It was very nice of him you know, to do that. I gave him $5 for lunch for his help because that really helped me out. I didn't want to have to leave this whole front end behind. And it was looking like I was going to have to do that because I was being defeated. But it was just so hot even though it was like only 80 degrees but working like that for like an hour and a half straight I was getting so tired and thirsty and so that's another reason I left a lot of parts behind because I wanted to go back and get them but I was just totally beat but you can see here's the front clip I got it off and I got it on a shopping cart dragged it all the way up to buy it and I could have used a different cart they had there but all my tools were there and I didn't want to leave everything back there and risk getting any of it stolen or lost and so I just did it like this but um, this was kinda cruddy though because they charged for every part of the front end of this car they charged for the front bumper support, they charged for the radiator support, they charged for the header panel which I got another one because the one on it was cracked so I mean I understand that but you know buying it as a complete piece I don't think they should pick it apart and charge every little thing that you have in there. They charged for the AC condenser that was still in there which I have no idea if it's good. The lines are cut on it and I told them that but they didn't care. So it cost a lot more money than I wished it would have but still it was really a score to get this piece because going down there this really made the trip even more worth it to me. I'm really glad I did it because this is something that I can work with now. I was going to have to get a whole nother Mustang and cut the front end and a lot of work has been done on this piece to fabricate it and cut it and remove the uh, spot welds from the car that this red one was uh, removed from originally so that I could have a nice um, piece to work with and know how to mock it up to the car so I was really happy to get this and it just beat me though. I was so tired and so thirsty when I was done doing this uh, plus another two hour drive home but I just tried to relax and and take it easy once I got this off but you can see my gallon of water there on the cart I drank almost that entire thing and I'm so glad I had that because I've been there before without it and I almost dehydrated and passed out because I carried a hood once by hand carried it all the way after the same type of thing only it was like 110 degrees and my family was waiting out in the car and I had removed the hood and a whole bunch of things and I was literally just counting every step as I carried the hood and my toolbox and everything I had with me back to uh, the front of the store to buy it all 
and it was 100 degrees. I could just hear my heart beating in my ears because of how dehydrated I was, and I got to the building, turned on their hose, and drank straight from the hose. It was awful, so I made sure to bring water this time and take care of myself, and so I did all right. I had to stop a few times as I was pounding and pounding and pounding to break this loose. I stopped, sat in the shade of that Mach 1, drank some water, and then I continued, and it was just a big struggle, but I was glad I was able to get it finished. And so I had a couple guys help me lift it up on top of the rack of the Tahoe, strapped it down, and then inside the Tahoe I had all the zinc yellow parts, the trunk, hood, A-pillars, fenders, everything. And so it cost me $500 and $100 in gas to go down there and get it, so over $600. And I did keep the VIN number off that Mach 1 with the special R in it as a, just a keepsake, you know, it was gonna be th thrown away anyway so I kept that so got the car home you know I went to the swimming pool had a good time and relaxed with my family had a nice cold drink you know soda pop and then I uh, got to work on the car a little bit my brother was gonna come over and help and so I just really wanted to install these a pillars the previous owner had parted out the a pillars and the trunk from this car you know so I was just really happy to get these back on the car because now they look good the new Sonic Blue Mustang I bought had a pillars but they were blue obviously and so I just really wanted to get these pieces back on because now the car looks so much better so then I went out and I cleaned the hood and the trunk and you know it had a bunch of scratches on it they had a bunch of uh, black marks on it from people just rubbing stuff against it, maybe the tow truck driver straps, things, kind of marred them up, but you know, they're all there and there's ink yellow, spoiler and everything, so I was happy to get those cleaned up and uh, get those ready to go on the car. Now the hood's not going to be able to go on for a little while because um, the whole front end's probably going to have to be replaced before it'll sit flat on there, but I was just happy to get these pieces. So I tried a couple things, I tried some degreasers, I tried some goof off, I tried goo gone, and, you know, I had a bunch of different little cleaners and, you know, some of it wanted to take some of the finish with it, so I thought, oh, forget it, I'll just, you know, I'll buff it out later when it's on the car and stuff, and try to make it look as nice as I can, but uh, basically I was able to get that all done. So you can see my brother came over in his red Mach 1 and we went ahead and started to change the trunk off and I was really excited about this. This was probably my favorite part <laughs> of this recent build because I really wanted the car to look good and you know I could put this yellow trunk on the car, turn around and then from the street the car would look like a nice car again and it wouldn't look like a mismatched clown car but uh, I just took these uh, strut, um, struts off with a screwdriver and then we unbolted the hinges and were able to lift this hood off and that came off nicely. And we had just put this on if you've seen the other video but I was just really excited to get the yellow one back on the car because uh, you know I just really think that makes a big difference having the same color body panels on there. And so this would go on quite nicely and um, just put the struts on first to hold it in place, being careful not to crack the back window. If you hit the corners of the trunk onto the window, you can crack it. I've also uh, seen where you have those struts on and then uh, the trunk can move side to side and scratch the quarter panels, so you just have to be very careful. It's good to have two people, so I was glad that my brother came over to help me with that. Man, that looked so much better. I'm so happy with that. I'll get some tail lights in there soon, too. So then getting this off the top of the Tahoe was going to be a little bit of a challenge. It's not really too heavy. It's just awkward. And the front of it is heavier than the back. And uh, as you can see here in this video, the hardest part was when we lifted it off the roof rack, and we'd get it back towards the back of the car. And then um, the back section of the roof rack that goes you know side to side was catching on the hood latch so it's like we would get it 
and then it would catch on the, the latch. We had to lift it up a lot higher to get it off of the hood latch. But I'm glad this whole piece has the hood latch because the other one was missing. It has a lot of good pieces on the front of this whole thing. Hood latch. So I have a lot of work to do and you know this car is coming along a lot better than it was. It's funny I tell people that at this point it's basically a giant model car. I'm just putting it together like a giant model car. It doesn't run, it doesn't do anything, but it's you know getting worked on slowly. I'm getting seats, I'm getting body parts, I'm putting things back together. It's just kind of a fun project to have and I would like to see it on the road again one day. You know I need an engine for it and some stuff. Uh, but anyway, it's coming along and I'm really excited about it, so stay tuned for more updates and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, stay tuned for more Mustang content.